What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of All the Mods Expert Mode. Oh, yeah, guys. So, last time we finally got to our Ender IO machines. Yeah, we made our Sagmill and our Alloy Smelter. We made some of our Energy Conduit. So, we replaced some of the immersive engineering wires that we had over here. We also made a bio generator and a crusher so we could start using some bio generator fuel. Or I guess bio fuel for the bio generator to make more power. So, yes, that's working pretty well. Now, we're not really drawing a lot of power, so this thing isn't really kicking on, but it's just another source of power. Now, I said last time that I was thinking about getting rid of the water wheel, and some people have pointed out that I shouldn't get rid of it. It's still trickle power. Like, it's always producing, like, ADRF per tick or whatever. There's no real reason to get rid of it right now. I agree. I was kind of thinking we should get rid of it and just switch over to something like this, but for now, we'll just leave the water wheel as it is. Now, I was talking about last episode that I wanted to make ourselves a farming station and try and set up some kind of a automation so we can start collecting plant material, crushing it, turning it into the biofuel, and having lots of fuel on hand. That's definitely something that I want to have automated. So we were looking at getting ourselves a farming station, which requires all of this stuff. We need Ender IO materials in order to make it. Uh, we also need to get ourselves another machine because we need a Z-Logic controller, which is made in the Slice and Splice. So we need to get ourselves a Slice and Splice before we can really do anything here. And that requires a Solarium. Looks like uh, the farming station, or I guess the Z-Logic also requires Solarium. So we're going to need seven pieces of Solarium, which means we need seven pieces of gold with Soul Sand. So we have some gold dust here. This is pretty much our main supply of gold at this point in time. It's not a whole lot. Yeah, we definitely need to get a way where we can get ourselves a little bit more gold. All right, we can just go mining. One of the two. I've done a lot of mining in this playthrough so far. So if we can get an automated way of getting gold, that'll be better. Uh, pigmen are the obvious choice for that. But I don't know if we're going to be setting up a pigmen farm anytime soon. Right, so we need to get ourselves seven soul sand. And I'm not sure if I can put soul sand plus that gold dust into our alloy smelter to make the solarium or if I have to melt that into gold ingots first. We'll find out here. So alloy smelter, we are on alloys only there. Oh, that won't click in there. Okay, so we need furnace moved first. I heard something explode that freaked me out for a second. <laughs> uh, yeah, we need furnace mode first to turn those into the ingots. And then we should be able to take those ingots plus the soul sand on the alloy only mode to make solarium and yeah, there's our gold ingots here okay so we'll melt that down and we'll get that going uh is there anything else that we can work on at this point in time right so we're gonna need more of the refined obsidian ingots more tongue steel stuff in order to make these machine chassis the pulsating crystals is uh i believe that's iron and ender pearl in this machine uh so let's go back here then that, that. All right, and that is going to go kind of slow. It does sound like our bio generator is working here, which is kind of cool. Yeah, that is producing... Uh, we want RF. So 140 RF per tick. So I guess it's not really drawing anything off the battery. It's going from here first, which I guess is fine. I kind of wish it would go from that. I don't know. I, I guess we could move the bio generator to a better spot, like have that feed directly into the battery, and the battery can feed everything else currently that's not the way things are set up so it's not working in that particular way yeah so we need to get ourselves just a few pieces of iron here and some ender pearls might have to go back to the end here pretty soon and farm those up we do have these ender lilies which i've just now harvested for the first time that's been sitting here for a while ready to go but those grow really really slowly and since we have access to the end it just makes more sense just to go there to farm them up uh, all right, so this is gonna take a while then I need to get the iron put through there and get that smelted And then we can start looking at getting some of these things made So let me go ahead and wait for these processes to happen and we'll be right back guys All right guys, so I let some of those materials process I made some tongue steel. I made some pulsating iron. I made Well, actually we had like 12 refined obsidian ingots So I used some of those and then we had uh, some solarium made I also cooked up two more machine chassis and we had a little bit of the empowered redstone left over. Anyway, we're trying to make this slice and splice at this point in time. So we need to get ourselves an iron ax and iron shears. So let's grab some iron. We'll grab a stick or two. All right. So iron ax like a so, 
and then shears like a so okay so there's that we should have everything together except for a skull to make the slice and splice now we've gotten plenty of skulls so far i don't want to use the skeleton we only have one zombies are pretty important i don't think creeper heads are used for much so we'll go ahead and use a creeper head for this and there we go slice and splice so there is another ender io machine made so now we have that I want to start looking at making this farming station. That's going to require some more stuff here, including the Z-Logic controller, which does require silicon, solarium, redstone, and a zombie head. That's why I didn't want to use a zombie head, because we're going to need those for later on. So we also, let's, let's go back for a second here. We need silicon. That's something we haven't had to make yet. And that kind of makes me think, maybe we should start looking at <laughs> applied energistics. Every time I look at silicon, that's what I think of first, is the AE. Uh, so yeah, we should probably look at that. I'm tired of going through this storage here and having like all these random things around. I'd rather get everything digitally stored, including like all this stuff. I keep having my inventory. I would put a lot of this stuff away, but like we are running out of space. <laughs> like all of our chests are full. So anyway, uh, so we want to make the, this farming station. So we need to put sand in a crusher to get silicon, or we can put sand in the sag mill to get silicon. Uh, looks like we can do clay, we can do redstone, yeah, and then sand, we get like a 50% chance, and then we get a, an additional bonus chance, we use flint or dark steel balls, uh, so let's grab some sand here, we'll just go ahead and put a full stack through this machine, uh, I think I have the conduit on me for the, for the slice and splice, I was like, what machine did I just make, I couldn't remember for a second there, We'll place this here. We'll put an energy conduit on there and power that up. There we go. So that's getting power. Things are going to happen. We do have to make an axe and a shears for this machine as well for that to work. We'll put the zombie head there. Um, so sag mill. Sag mill, sag mill, sag mill. We will put a stack of sand in there. I do have some flint that I have put in here as well. So that gives us a little bit of an extra bonus of this stuff. But two silicone is all we need. So there goes that. All right, so the next things that we want to do, yeah, we need the shears, we need the axe, we need two solarium, we have those already. All right, so we need one piece of redstone, and then we should be able to make our Z-Logic. So let's make ourselves the axe and the shears, and grab a piece of redstone. <laughs> yeah, I keep forgetting that you have to put those tools into that machine over there. It's like one of those things, you set up the machine, you have to make those tools, and you forget about it, because the tools always last the life of the machine, or at least I've never have to replace them ever. All right, so there is Iron Axe again, and then Shears. Cool. All right, so we have that, and then we need one piece of redstone. All right, so that should get us our Z-Logic controller. Now, as we're making these machines, I can't help but think that I kind of want to start working towards getting Dark Steel Armor, which I think we should be able to do about now. The Dark Steel Armor is really good because we can get Night Vision. And we can fly. Well, I guess if we get the Dark Solarium chest plate anyway. Um, yeah, I think that is something that I am wanting to do is look at being able to fly around finally. Having night vision so the hardcore darkness doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, there's a lot of things that I would like to do. Okay, so there is our Z Logic controller. Right, so now we need to make electrical steel. That is made with iron plus coal dust plus that silicon we are currently cooking up over here. So, yes, we need this stuff for that. Um, what else do we need here? So we looked at that, this. I think we have everything else. Let me go ahead and just cook up some of this electrical steel. And then we will make our farming station. And then we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, so the electrical steel is all processed now. We got lots of stuff ready to go here for our farming station, but we still need to make these pulsating crystals, and we also need to get out that diamond hoe. So let's grab a couple of diamonds, and wait a second. That is four diamonds that we are going to need, two sticks. All right, so now we should have everything. Let's make the diamond hoe first of all, so we don't screw things up here. Nope, not an axe. A hoe, there it is. And then we need to... Uh, take some of the pulsating iron here, break that into nuggets, then we can make these things. Cool. So there's pulsating crystals, and there is our farming station. So I believe the farming station, you do have to put a hoe in that as well. Take a look at this thing. Uh, so yes, yeah, so you can put an axe, you can put shears, you can put a hoe in there. So I assume this can shear animals too. I don't know if I've ever done that before, or chop down trees. 
I don't think I've really used a farming station for chopping wood either. I've really only ever used it for harvesting crops. Uh, but yeah, this thing, it looks like you got a slot for bone meal here. That's the output slot. This is where you can put the seeds in to, for replanting. So yeah, pretty straightforward machine. So let's go ahead and pick this thing back up. I was kind of thinking with this thing that we could set it over here by our existing crop field. Yeah, our wheat field over here. Yeah, right over here. I believe this thing will work. Let's see, that's one, two, three, four, five. It should work and get all these things. We place that right like this. We'll put a torch back here so things don't spawn over here. Yeah, I think that should be just fine. Then it should auto harvest this, and we'll have to get a way to get the items out of this machine and get power into this machine. Uh, so I think what we're going to do, we'll set up our crusher over here. The crusher... Or I guess the wheat will go into some kind of a storage. The storage will go into the crusher. The crusher will make biofuel. The biofuel will go into some other kind of storage. And then out of that storage will go into a biogenerator to keep this farm running. That way we'll always collect wheat and we'll always have a supply of biofuel. I think that's going to be our best bet for this farm. Now, if we make enough surplus... Uh, we can start setting more bio generators and get more power going. I think that's going to be a smart way of doing this. Another thing we can do is we can fill in some of these water spots here with more dirt and put in some more wheat. We really only need one source block of water uh, per side. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's all we need to do. So we can add in like, I guess, 16 more crops here. We can even add in some more right here if we wanted to and get rid of these logs separating these two separate fields. That might be something else we do. But first of all, we need to start working on getting something to extract items. So let's look at item conduit. So the item conduit is made with those pulsating iron nuggets and then some conduit binder that gives us eight item conduits. So we'll probably want to make like half a stack of these. So we're going to need a decent amount of this conduit binder, which again is slime balls plus grout and all this stuff. All right. So that is going to be the next thing is to get some of these item conduits made. Uh, we already have our bio generator over here and we already have the crusher so we can just steal those machines and bring them over there and then run power wires where we need to. I think that's going to work just fine. So yeah, let me go ahead and make some of the conduit binder. We'll make some of the item conduits. I think we're going to need more power cables, a little bit of more crafting to do. Let me get to it and we'll be back guys. All right, guys, so I dug out a little spot below our farm here. Oops, turning nighttime. <laughs> yeah, I dug out a little spot below our farm. I filled in the water here with some dirt, so we have some more plantable spots. We got our farming station right here in the center. Yeah, and we got a little bit of working room down here. Uh, so we need to get ourselves some storage, so we have some basic drawers here. Yeah, oh, you know what? I think we're going to need one more because we're going to get extra seeds, and we're going to need something to do with that. Anyway, uh, so this is straight down from here. So we should be able to put in, we'll have that be our output chest from our farming station. So let's grab, <laughs> okay, that was weird. Let's grab some of these conduits here and these will be set to insert and insert, right? So we're going to want wheat in one of these and we'll have to lock that. And we're going to want seeds in the other one. Uh, anyway. So now we have that done. We should be able to put a bio generator right. No, no, no. Sorry. Wrong one. We need the crusher right next to it. So crusher goes here. We'll extract out of this into the crusher. So let's put some conduit back here. That'll be set to extract. Uh, that'll be set to always active. And this will be set to insert. Cool. All right. So then we got that done. And now we are going to need to put our bio generator here. Does this machine have an auto export? It does. It does. Okay. So we'll do input on this machine. This should be the back. So input. Let's go ahead and turn all these other ones off. Okay. And on the right hand side, we want that to be output. Is that the blue? Okay. And that'll go right into this bio generator. So this will provide power and then we can run power over to this machine and then up into our farming station. So we have a little bit of energy conduit here. We can do one of these numbers. And I guess something like that should just be fine. Uh, so we want extract always active on our farming station up here. So that is filling up with power. Let's see the uh, bio generator here. I do have a little bit more biofuel that we can put right like that. Wow, that is 
eating up all the power that's filling up these energy conduits <laughs> full of power and then also our farming station i suppose so this uses 40 rf per tick and it holds a million internal power that's pretty good i think yeah i think we should be okay on that now i did make myself a new mad talk so we can place that here uh yeah that looks like that is doing work so we should be collecting yep we are collecting wheat here and then that should be replanting seeds everywhere else we can distribute those and lock that so we can only get wheat seeds here i think that'll be just fine so if we come upstairs and look all of that well most of that should be harvested okay so it looks like that only does a five by five i might have to put in an upgrade into this machine to expand it out one so it might need a double layer or maybe just a basic capacitor i can't remember or we did find all those other capacitors hmm i wonder if those other ones will work the specific ones yeah we, the ones you can only find in dungeons i know we have like two of those but i don't know if that works for the farming machine i know we also found a whole bunch of those over at the desert temple uh so we have these right here enhanced hungry wonder capacitor and then we have uh premium hungry wonder capacitor I don't know if the hungry, <laughs> those words go with certain machines. And I don't know if hungry means the farming station or if that means something else. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, we'll try putting this in here and see what happens. So yeah, that now uses 60 RF per tick. It now has 1.5 million internal storage. But does that increase the range? Oh, it looks like it does. That's all that really matters to me. So, yeah, it'll be able to harvest this entire crop field with this new capacitor here. I think everything should be just fine. Right, so when we get extra seeds, those should go down here into this other drawer. Uh, in fact, I should grab one seed and place it in there as a placeholder so wheat doesn't go in there at all, ever. Uh, oh, I gotta unlock it. Place that back, then lock it again. Okay, so now we have one wheat seed place that right down in here and this will be insert only we're never extracting out of this thing so this should only ever fill up full of seeds um i guess we could also set this as a priority like the highest priority just in case we ever <laughs> run out of wheat here it'll try and put seeds over here first and not into here and then this won't ever back up Ideally, what we want to do is lock both of these drawers so this will only ever accept wheat and this will only ever accept seeds. But for right now, that'll take care of the problem. Okay, so now that we got all of this done, we need to extract the wheat from this one and over into here. So let's set that up. So we'll do extract always active. It's set to insert. So this is now getting wheat. The wheat is being crushed. And that is going over here into our bio generator, right? Maybe. Did I put the auto eject not on? On. There we go. So now that should be auto ejecting over here. All right. So probably what we want to do to make this even better yet is instead of having this eject directly into the bio generator, we should have another drawer set up here that it ejects into. And then we can pull out of that drawer and put it into this. Eventually, this thing is going to fill up with the one stack. But we want this to keep filling and making more and more of that bio fuel, right? So yeah, that's gonna be another thing we need to do. Let me go make one more drawer. I'll move everything around, get that little buffer drawer set up, and then we'll be back. All right, guys, so our generator finally filled up all the power for our farming station up here. Yeah, so a thing I didn't realize when we were setting this up is the farming station always uses 60 RF per tick. I currently have it set to active with signal, but if we set to always active, our generator turns on, so it's going to be making that 60 RF per tick all the time, right? It's also going to power this until this is done with the wheat. But yeah, uh, it's going to be using 60 RF all the time, which means it's always going to be using this biofuel, which means eventually we're going to run out because I don't think the wheat growing at the normal default vanilla rate is going to keep up. Hmm. So we need a way to turn this farm on and off, or we need to use a different type of power. So for now, I'll go ahead and turn this back off. Uh, active. How about never active for right now? Let's get this weed out of here so this thing stops making sound, and then our generator should turn off. 
and then we have silence once again okay so yeah uh our two options like i said is either turn the farm off and only turn it on during certain conditions or we're gonna have to change power supplies yeah i wish i would have realized that at the very start but you know whatever uh, we still need the crusher and we still need the bio generator for other things later on uh, So our other option would be to put like a water wheel down here Well, I guess under here and use that as power like I said, I think the water wheels make 80 RF per tick this farm says it uses 60 so that should be more than enough to store this and then whenever we get wheat It should be able to crush it in the crusher and keep up with the power over here as well um so yeah, I think we can take that biofuel then and turn it into like ethylene and do all that other stuff. But yeah, unfortunately, just running this whole farm off the bio generator, I don't think that's going to work unless we had um, agricraft where we could get four pieces of wheat per harvest every time and it grew faster. Yeah, like I said, it's just not going to work this way. We'll, we'll, we will eventually run out of biofuel. So yeah. We gave it a try. We do have an automated way of farming stuff. We could also repurpose this farming station specifically for, uh, you know, tree farming or whatever, if we wanted to. Now, another thing I was thinking about is if we could turn this thing on for, I don't know, maybe a minute or so when the day changes, when it becomes daylight. So it search the farm, harvest all the things and then turn itself back off. So we're not using power all the time. Uh, that's one option. I was also thinking about how we could uh, do that. So I was searching for a super. I was looking for timers and stuff. So I was thinking maybe super circuit maker. We can make something to do that. And then I was looking. I was like, wait, what are, what are these things down here? What are those? I saw a stick axe. It says right click to harvest all logs in a three by three chunk area. It turns all logs, all logs harvested into oak because wood type is irrelevant when making sticks and what else do you do with wood uh-huh <laughs> i saw the burn time down there 159 million i was like what so if you click on this the stick acts for the recipe it just requires two sticks and then these sextuple compressed sticks that requires quintuple quadruple triple double and then regular compressed stick which is nine sticks per. So it's, it's a lot of sticks that go into those. And then there's also the stick sword. It says it's best. It's the best. So obviously everyone would have fun with it. It has 50 attack damage. This requires octuple compressed stick though. <laughs> Look at the burn time on the octuple compressed stick. Man, this thing is crazy. But yeah, again, so the octuple goes to the septuple, sextuple, quin, quad, tri triple, double, and then compress stick, and then the regular stick. So yeah, these are kind of crazy. The stick axe isn't that bad with the sextuple, but that is still a lot of wood, a lot of logs that go into making all these sticks. I thought that was kind of interesting. I've never seen this mod before. So yeah, that's kind of cool. But anyway, like I said, I was looking at uh, Super Circuit Maker, see if we could get some kind of like a uh, timer thing going on, but... Yeah, I'm not sure how we're going to handle this. It's kind of unfortunate that <laughs> this is going to be drawing that amount of power all the time. And I really do think that the best way is just to set up another water wheel. So that's probably going to be what we will end up doing for the power down here. All right, guys. So we made another one of these water wheels. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we had all the parts ready to go. We've already had the creosote oil, so it's easy enough to make the treated wood. And we had the LV wire connector, so it was easy to make the dynamo. But anyway, yeah, I installed a new water wheel down here. Probably should have moved it down one more block so we couldn't have a solid floor. But now we kind of have water on our floor. But anyway, uh, we installed a new water wheel here. And we are connecting to the power right there. It's coming up and then connecting to our main power. I have disconnected the power from our bio generator. So we're no longer using this thing at all to power us over here. Everything is being powered directly off the water wheel. And if that's making... At least 80 RF per take, everything is keeping up just fine. Yeah, our crusher's going. This is staying at 7.98 KRF. Yep, that's not going down. And our farming station is using power here, 60 RF per tick, and that is not going down. So our water wheel is making enough to power both of these machines, which is pretty awesome. So yeah, we'll continually be harvesting wheat, turning that into biofuel, and storing that automatically. Now we can also expand this farm out. I do believe that magic capacitor, whatever that is, is uh, increasing the range 
far enough for this farming station that yeah we could add in more things we could make the wheat field bigger we could add in trees so we're automatically harvesting those there's a lot of things we could do here which is going to be pretty nice as far as automations go but for right now yeah the uh the thing that i wanted to do <laughs> we have done and yeah we're making enough power to keep everything running which is pretty awesome um so yeah unfortunately the uh, the bio generator isn't gonna work for keeping everything powered as we saw but i think all in all everything is gonna be just fine now eventually this will fill up full of biofuel this thing will back up and then we'll start collecting a lot of wheat over here so then we'll have wheat available whenever we need it as well so that's kind of cool anyway guys i think we're gonna wrap the episode up here for today yeah farming station done we got more ender io machines made more power on tap and ready to go i think we're pretty good as far as that's concerned uh, as far as the power is over that we have over here we still need to increase our power supply so we'll have to look at different ways of doing that we might do the ethylene using the uh, the biofuel turning it into substrate and ethylene we might do that or we might look at some other means but for right now I think we're in a pretty good situation, so we'll have to figure that out uh, a little bit later. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.